when I am rested by D.S. Knight. The grass beneath my paws is soft, springy. It propels me forward with every bound as I dart and weave through it. My tongue swings loose, free, as I drink the air, the bright spot in the sky warming everything perfectly. A bird flits out of the undergrowth, but nothing can take my attention away from the ball. It soars through the air in a perfect arc, and I can hear my people laughing and cheering as I chase it. Any second now I will catch it, and when I do, I will bound back to my people, my mum and dad, and they will be so happy. They will shower me with treats and hugs and say, good dog. I run and run, pant and pant, and I get closer and closer. But then the world shrinks to a pinpoint, and I hear angry buzzing and I feel the pain. The world grows around me again, but this time it is different. This time I am awake. It has hurt to be awake for a long time now. My legs are stiff and sore and protest as I try to stretch. My rear left leg doesn't move at all and my back is in agony no matter how I am positioned. I don't know why. I am a good dog. I haven't done anything to cause all of this. I know this because my people tell me with their actions and their words. They give me good dog that's the spot scratches down my sides and bring me food, though it's hard to eat. When I'm rested, I will fetch them all sorts of things to say thank you. As my senses return, I realise Dad is there and the salt and fat good dog smell of my favourite treat. Gently he places it in front of my nose and his fingers tickle the spot behind my left ear. I sniff at the food and my mouth waters and my tongue feels it all over before I start to nibble. It is hard to eat. I know it'll hurt if I wolf it down like I want to. So instead I carefully pull it apart. It is good that I do because right in the middle... In the centre of the tasty, meaty, salty, mushy bit is where they hide the bad thing. Even though I take my time and try to avoid it, I still get the bad dog don't eat that taste in my mouth, and I whine and look at Dad and plead with my eyes. I don't understand why all of my treats have this tiny white thing in them these days, and even though I know it makes Mum and Dad sad when I don't eat it, I leave it untouched. He sighs and tickles my ear again. I want to get up, to play to run around and out the back door, but I will do that later when I have rested more and my leg wakes up. Mum takes me into the wet room, the one where it's okay for them to do don't do that in here that is for the garden things. I hate this room. When I was little they would put me in the big box and fill it with water. Bath time they would say in a tone that made it sound like a treat, but it was always a trick. I'm not awake enough to fight it, I try. I waddle my paws ready to swim as she lowers me into the water. It's warm and soothing, and I feel a little bad for not wanting to be in it. She keeps hold of me on my tummy with one of her hands while the other runs through my fur on my back, getting that all soggy. She is gentle and keeps talking softly to me. Today I will let her off with bringing me in here. I'm too tired to make a fuss, but when I'm rested, I will remind her that I don't like it. She cuddles me in the towel, the good one, not my normal one. It has got much more fluff and no chew holes, it's warmer and I love it. When I am rested, I will put this towel in my bedroll on it and chew it until I can keep it. The morning passes. I sit on Mum's lap and she strokes me over and over again, massaging my aching body and telling me I am the best dog. Her voice is soft and strange and it makes me sad. When the sky is at its brightest, Dad comes into the lounge and Mum pushes her face close to my neck. Her breath is hot and her eyes are wet. I am scooped up in her arms and I realise that we are going outside. Not to the garden, but out the big door and into the car. My tail wags and wags even though it makes my back ache. But the pain won't stop me. I like it when they know I am happy. The air of the outside world strokes my face as she carries me to the car. I like the car. I like the world flashing by and the smells and the window open and the wind in my fur. Dad has my blanket in his arms and my favourite chew toy, the one with the missing eye and ripped leg. He even has a can of food and my lead. My lead. I can't remember the last time I went for a proper walk. I try to bark, to sing, walk, walk, walk. But my voice is creaky and it hurts my throat. I will rest in the car so my leg is better by the time we get to wherever we are going for the big walk. Walk, walk, walk. I try to yell again but it comes out of me like dust. All of my things are put on the back seat of the car and Mum slides in next to them, still holding on to me. Normally I sit in the back alone. Normally I'm free to run in circles on the seat or in that space knee. It might be fun to have Mum back here. I will try to make it fun for her. 
The can of food pokes out from my blanket, and I am transported back to when I was a pup, back to when my teeth didn't hurt and my throat didn't croak. I would scratch and scrabble at the cupboard in the kitchen where my food was kept whenever mum and dad weren't within earshot. The cans were hard in my mouth, and sometimes the metal would bite me back, but if I chewed on them just right the metal would crack open and I'd be able to lick out all of the salty fatty gravy meat from the insides. When I was small, I thought that this would make my people happy, save them the job of feeding me themselves, but it only made them sad and angry and disappointed. If I sat patiently and waited for my food to be put in my bowl, they smiled though, and so that is what I did. I sat, and I sang for them. Now they bring my bowl to me in my bed with the salty, fatty gravy meat all mushed up and soft. Sometimes it's warm, and sometimes there is one of those little white bad dog circles hidden inside. I miss the way it made mum and dad smile and laugh, so when I am rested I will sing for my supper again. I must have fallen asleep again, the motion of the car and the feeling of mum's hand on my back and neck soothing me into that dream world once more. My eyes don't like to open. Everything is a bit too bright and for a moment blurry. The outside looks familiar. I recognise the trees and the buildings. I know the smell, cut grass and the scent of other dogs. I think I know where we are going, and for a moment I am excited and I turn to lick mum on the face. But her eyes are sad and leaking, and the way her hand moves makes me think that she is scared. Her touch is soft, like I might break. When I was little, mum and dad would scruff my fur up and flip me over, and we would tumble around on the floor and I would bark and bark and bark and they would laugh and throw balls and try to beat me at tug-of-war. I miss those days, but these soft cuddles and strokes are good too. They are kind on my stiff back and it means that I can sleep as much as I like. When I am rested, I will play like that again, and maybe that will make mum's eyes stop leaking. The car rumbles to its stop and the sun shines through the window, warming my stiff limbs. It makes me want to run and jump and play, just like the old days. The heat of the light coming through the window brings me to life, almost. When I am rested, me and mum and dad will play everywhere, on a big open field or a beach or even just in our garden. We will have so much fun, and I will find them the biggest stick anyone has ever seen. It will be tough because I have already found a lot of very big sticks, but I will do it because I love them. I try to roll, to feel the warmth of the sun on my tummy, but instead I feel pain and everything goes white for a second. I hear something high-pitched, and it takes me a second to realise that I am crying. Mum is crying too, but she isn't whimpering like me. She is silent, with salt tears rolling down her cheeks, and her hands move me so that I don't fall and hurt myself more. I feel like a bad dog, so I carefully place a paw on her shoulder so that I can lick the tears away. It hurts, stretching my back and neck like this, but mum needs my help. I lick and I kiss and I lick some more, but the tears keep appearing. I feel her hands on my shoulders and she lets out a very quiet breath that might have been a laugh, even though her eyes are still sad, still leaking. My tail wags once, twice, and suddenly I am scooped into the air and out of the car by dad and mum gathers my things into her arms and follows us into the park. Nothing in the world is more important than making my people happy. When I'm rested, I will do everything to make sure that mum never cries again. I watch the park go by from the comfort of dad's arms. It is my favourite park, the park with all of the sticks and the pond, and my tongue lolls out of my mouth, and for a moment the pain is gone. I am a pup again, running through the thick grass. It is just like the place in my dreams, bright and airy, and there are dogs and balls and smiling people everywhere, playing fetch and relaxing in the sun. I wish it could be like this forever, painless, happy, warm, but this is not my dream, and I can feel the foggy sleepiness gradually coming back, bringing the pain with it. My toes feel cold, and I'm sure that the colours were brighter when I was small. My legs shake slightly and I feel Dad tighten his grip on me. He looks just as sad as Mum does. I do not think they want to play at all today. We come to a stop beneath a tree. I know this tree, and I can catch the faint smell of all the dogs who know this tree. My blanket is spread out on the ground. All three of us cuddle up on it, and we watch the world go by in silence that is only broken by the sound of birds singing and Mum and Dad's ragged breathing. The branches of the tree spider out above us, shading us from the bright sky. 
I wish I could make my people happy, but everything I do seems to make their faces wet. I wish I knew what I had done wrong and why I can't fix it. Is it because I can't chase the birds anymore? Or because I haven't fetched them a stick? When I am rested, I will do everything you ask and more, I promise them, nudging Dad's hand with my head. He makes a noise that is almost a laugh, but it sounds too thick in his throat. His fingers find the good dog spot behind my ear, the place that makes my back leg jiggle when it's tickled just right. It confuses me because he is sad, and his face gets wet when he looks into my eyes. They are always so nice, even when I have let them down. I wag my tail a tiny bit, just a twitch so that it doesn't hurt. I wish I could wag it harder and spin in a circle and sing for them, but I am tired, so tired that I can feel it in my bones. While I enjoy my cuddle, Mum opens up the can of food. My nose twitches as the smell reaches me, and my front paws dance without me telling them to. They click as they move, but the pain is not so bad that it distracts me from the meat and fat and gravy good dog dinner time that I know is coming. There is a small kerfuffle. Mum can't find my bowl, but it is resolved quickly enough. Dad takes the can and dumps the food on the grass in front of me. I lean my head forward and sniff at the food and my tail wags slowly. Tentatively, careful to take small bites, I eat around the soft stems of grass that protect my lunch from the dirt. I can't chew much these days so my food is soft and I can feel a film of gravy clinging to my face. I will lick that off later, I think to myself. Swallowing the food is uncomfortable, but the ever-present feeling of Dad's hand rubbing my shoulders as I enjoy my meal makes it bearable. I wish he loved on me this much every day. It makes me feel safe. I am full before I have even eaten half of the meat and fat and gravy good dog Dinny are. I want it, but I can't face it. I feel drowsy, so I pad over to Mum and lay my head on her lap. The sun warms my back and I drift away to sleep. I don't know how long had passed, but I awake to find that Mum and Dad have decided that it is time to return to the car. I am still wrapped up in my blanket, and they are still very sad. Mum holds me on her knee in the car again, and I couldn't be happier. I hope that all of our car journeys from now on are like this, and when I'm rested, maybe we can even play games on the way to the park. I can't wait. Soon I notice that this car journey isn't quite the same as the last one. Instead of stroking my head and my ears, Mum just places her hand on my head. I look up at her, straining my neck, to see that she is staring out of the window. Dad mutters something and she looks at him briefly, but then her eyes go straight back to the outside world. She is looking anywhere but at me, and I sigh softly, wondering if I have done something wrong again. I notice how quiet it is suddenly. There is no music, just the rumble of the car. The warmth of the sun has gone, and the sky is slowly getting darker. The car comes to a stop after what feels like eternity, but Mum and Dad do not get out immediately. They just sit quietly. In the stillness there is nothing to distract me from the pain in my limbs and the worry that nibbles at my mind. It is endless, and it makes me whine softly. Suddenly there is a flurry of movement and conversation, as if I had woke them from a nap and I am scooped up against Mum's chest and out into the evening. I lick at her cheek, tasting salty tears. She says nothing to me, just closes her eyes and breathes deeply. Dejected, I look around, excited to curl up in front of the fireplace and snooze while Mum and Dad busy themselves doing people things, but I realise that we are not at home. We are at the VT, and I do not like the vet. It smells like panic and fear, sadness and pain, and I have been here too many times recently. But today doesn't feel the same as usual. The lights inside are bright. It is as if the sun has decided to follow us indoors. Puppies snuffle about the corners of the room, yipping, tails wagging. They're excited to be somewhere new, to smell things they haven't smelt before. The old dogs lie at their people's feet, tired, unhappy. We sit with the old dogs where it is slightly quieter. I push my nose into Mum's lap to escape the smell and she stays silent, motionless. She is sad. She must be disappointed in me, annoyed that I couldn't play at the park, bitter because she has to bring me to the Viti so much. Dad doesn't sit with us straight away. He scratches behind my ear absent-mindedly and goes out of sight. I watch him go, watch him stop to pet a wriggling pup. She is filled with life, practising her singing and then rolling on her back. Tummy scratches, tummy scratches, she chants and tummy scratches she gets. 
I remember doing the same when I was small, but now my back hurts when I wiggle. As Dad continues to wherever he is going, she jumps up and makes to follow him, but she catches sight of her tail and prances around trying to chase it. I so am entranced by the pup that I don't notice Dad returning. Suddenly Mum is standing up and I shift uncomfortably in her arms. She walks slowly and her breathing is slow and loud. I feel something is wrong with them, but the pup doesn't seem to notice. I hope when I am rested I will get to say a hello to him and play. We walk slowly to a room, its harsh bright light hurting my weary eyes. The scent of fear seems to be a part of this new room rather than something that comes and goes. It is small and cold, and it makes me want to bristle out the hair along my neck and back. I don't, because I know that Mum and Dad are here, and they will make sure that I am safe even if I have upset them. My claws click as Mum sets me down on the metal table, and I look up nervously at the strange man who is standing before it. I do not recognise him, but I have seen people wearing the same clothes as him. I do not like him, he is not a friend. I want to move, to run, to go back to the park and chase the birds, to finish my half-eaten meal. Mum folds into Dad's arms as I turn to look at them. She is crying into his chest, and I whine to let her know I am okay. Dad's hand clenches into a fist and he says something quietly before turning hesitantly towards the door. You're a good dog, he says, quietly. My tail thumps once before I realise that they are leaving me alone with this man I do not know. Mum is shaking and I know something is wrong but I don't understand why they won't let me help. I don't know why they are leaving the room, why the door has closed, why they are now on the other side of it. I try to call out for them but my voice is dry and used. Was I a good dog? I think to myself. Am I? I feel fingers gripping the skin of my neck firmly. It doesn't hurt but I don't like it. My toes feel cold and suddenly there is a prickle of pain where he holds me. I look at him, whining quietly. I don't know if he can hear. Please, I just want mum and dad. From the point of the pinprick, an odd sensation starts to trickle over me. Slowly, things start to get darker and colder, and my body stops responding the way it should. I can't call out, I can't move off the table. My breath becomes shallower, shallower, darker. Just want mum and dad. In this stillness, the pain is overwhelming. I can't hear anything, I can't smell anything, I can do nothing but drift away. Alone and in the dark. Thank you for listening. Be sure to like, share and subscribe.